So in this video, I'm going to talk about how you should respond if your high conflict X makes a threat. Okay. And I see this all the time. I've seen this many, many times. If you're in a divorce situation, separation, at whatever stage you're at, kind of in the separation, divorce, aftermath, custody battle, whatever, I see this all the time. The high conflict types, if they don't get what they want, or if they get they if they get angry, they get worked up, they make they make threats. <clears throat> and so I'm going to give uh, an example. And, and going forward, what you're going to want to do is just follow this pattern of, of responses for responding in this way, regardless of what the threat is. But the one that I've heard a lot is, I'm going to take the kids, you're never going to see them again. Uh, I've, I've heard this so many times. I'm going to take the kids off, I'm going to take the kids to Texas, you're never going to see them again. And the idea here too, which uh, is unfortunate, high conflict types have, they're notorious, they're just notorious for using the kids to try and leverage or harm the other person. They weaponize the children. Um, they don't, you know, in their minds, it's like they don't care what's good for the kids or not. They think it'll really hurt them if I take the kids away from them. And that's what motivates them. It's an ugly thing to do. As a therapist, it just boils my blood. Um, I hate it when people pull the kids into that. Uh, don't weaponize kids. You want, you want to get on my bad side, man, don't weaponize the kids. Um, so in this particular example, I'm going to take the kids to Texas and you're never going to see them again. Okay. So what I, there's a concept here that that's important to understand. We're going to bring up a graphic here <clears throat> and here, what this is meant to illustrate is that when, when the emotions go up, the logic goes down. It's important to understand that logic and, and strong emotions cannot occupy the mind at the same time. And generally speaking, when you're dealing with a high conflict type, they pull you into the into the emotions, okay? I put Wonderland here because when it comes to, especially those who have a personality disorder, the more emotional they get, it's like Alice in Wonderland. Nothing makes sense, everything's crazy, uh, and the craziest person becomes the most in charge person. Um, and, so one of my one of my basic rules here is stay out of wonderland keep it in the land of logic and reason okay uh so if they make a threat what you want to do is avoid the emotional responses okay avoid getting angry and avoid a fear-based response and so what that might look like is if they say i'm going to take the kids to texas you're never going to see them again and you get angry and and you you monster you horrible person don't you dare rah, 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 rah. that actually only emboldens them that's kind of their gatorade it gives them energy um it it uh it, it actually motivates them to to pull it off or go through with it okay the other response you want to avoid is a fear-based response oh please no oh i'm sorry i'll just oh please don't right you're, you're actually giving them that payoff so stay out of wonderland don't go to don't go to alice in wonderland uh keep it in logic and reason so Here's how you respond instead. This is what you do instead. I'm going to take the kids to Texas. You're never going to see them again. Okay. Keep the response bland. Think of a gray stone. Okay. Don't be, don't show a lot of emotion. Keep your voice volume down. Try to keep a monotone. Um, and don't show a lot of facial expression if you're talking to them in person. And just say, well, I guess you're going to do what you're going to do. And then, and then move on. Okay. Bye. And so I know a lot of people out there were like, well, I have to do something. I have to, I have to, I can't just open the door and let them do that. Now, two things here. Number one is uh, they are far less likely to go through with it if they feel like you don't care. Uh, generally speaking, they go through with things like this because they know it's going to harm you. That's their motivation. That's why they do it. Um, well, I'm going, you know, if they know that, that you're in a frantic panic mode because they made that threat, and even if you are, you can't show it. You have to, you have to keep your poker face on. I know it's a big ask. It's very, very hard to do. I wouldn't ask you to do it if it wasn't uh, necessary uh, and most likely to get you the, a good result. Okay, so number one, the reasons why you don't put up resistance up front is because, A, um, like I said, uh, they are far more likely to go through with it if you put up heavy resistance up front. B, you do put up resistance. You just put it on the back end. This is actually one of my important rules for my 14 rules of uh, high conflict co-parenting. 
is you want to put resistance on the back end. So what you would do, again, you give them the bland response, think of a gray stone, and then you call your attorney, if you have one, and let them know what's happening so that they can get moving on their end. You, you're going to want to call and inform the police. I'm going to take this graphic down. <clears throat> you're going to want to go and uh, talk to the police and say, hey, you know, we have this decree, we have this custody situation in, in the decree. Uh, my ex is threatening to take the kids. You know, that I believe that's considered kidnapping. What can we do about it? Okay, uh, you, you want to go through due process. Uh, any resistance that you can put, because if they decide that they want to go through with it, every obstacle they hit is going to slow them down and they're going to talk themselves out of it pretty quick. It's almost like a, a wind hitting a forest. I mean, each time it runs into a tree, the wind just slows down until there's no wind at all. And so that's what you want to do. You want to do everything that you can to put up obstacles that will, because uh, they get exhausted quick. The idea runs out of gas pretty quick when they run into more obstacles. Um, you obviously don't want to do anything illegal, but hey, if it was me, I might even uh, think about going in the middle of the night and letting the air out of their tires. Don't slash the tires, don't vandalize, or just let the air out of one tire. And that's, that would be that could be enough to slow them down, right? Um, that might be terrible advice. It may depend on your your state, what you're willing, what you're able to do legally or not legally. So don't do that without talking to a lawyer first. Don't, don't give me this. Well, the therapist on the internet told me that I should do that. I'm just giving examples of ways to create resistance on the back end. And so that way they're just, they, they, they return less rage onto you. They're going to be less vengeful towards you if they just encounter resistance on that back end instead of that upfront resistance. Okay. So there is your, your tip of the day or the week or whatever, whenever I find time to shoot one of these things on how to respond to a high conflict type when they uh, make a threat. So if you found this content useful, you, you know what to do. Like, subscribe, share, comment, all that stuff. And if you want to contribute to uh, my, tip, my online tip jar, you will help enable me to make a lot more content like this. But you can also check out my Udemy courses on high conflict divorce and custody and my rules for high conflict co-parenting. Watching. Good luck with that. See you next time.